Okay, everybody. So, as you know, it has been some time since we checked in and did a Cooking Mama episode. Now, the last time we were doing a Cooking Mama episode, we watched the Sriracha Lime Popcorn, we watched the Lemon Spaghetti, and we watched the Roasted Pork Loin Sub. Today, we are probably going to watch a couple of these, but the first one we're going to watch is, of course, the Giant Pizza Roll, because... I mean, how can you not want to watch the giant pizza roll? Oh my god, it's deafening. Now, something to know about Dave's cooking show is that his intro is always extremely deafening. Now, I don't know if we're going to get to see all of the wonders that we usually see with Dave's cooking, but one of the things that sort of makes Dave's cooking Dave's cooking is... Well, he's very misogynist, okay? He makes a lot of sexist jokes while he's cooking. He's not a good cook. And he also tends to cook on extremely dirty surfaces. His grill, for example, we were able to locate a piece of curdled, disgusting meat that carried over across videos. And we were able to circle it live with my little drawing tool. We were able to circle the disgusting piece of unclean meat on his grill between videos. Him just throwing meat onto a dirty grill that has never been cleaned and has bird poop on the outside. It's actually disgusting. So it's been a while. So we have some treats in in uh, in in, in uh, on the way for us, huh? Isn't that fucking exciting? We get to find out what he's been up to. So without any further ado, let's settle in. And see what he's got for us. Let's see how the fucking pizza roll goes, huh? Okay, today on Dave's Cooking Show, we're going to be making a giant pizza roll. And trust me. So the first step of this video is to pre-purchase your dough and pre-purchase your sauce. Excellent. I'm glad we're going to really learn how to make a, a giant pizza roll at home. Hey, this thing's real easy. It's a great little thing to do if you're busy because, well, one, it can be really made ahead of time. But two, it's, well, it's not that hard to make. All right. Uh, Start by spreading some pizza sauce. You can make your own or get lazy like I did and buy a jar of decent sauce. And then just spread that out on an even layer. And then you want to... Do you think I could make an entire cooking channel out of just me opening, like, uh, Lunchables and eating them and calling that cooking? Because I feel like this is basically the same level. I feel like if you pre-purchase your pizza dough and your sauce and your cheese, and all you're doing is, is rolling it up and putting it in the, the oven for 30 minutes. That isn't really cooking. Is this War Corpse? Yes. This is the this is the artist formerly known as War Corpse 666, also known as the kid, the guy who screamed at a six-year-old child for being an S SJW. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Continue on by adding about a cup and a half to two cups of mozzarella, depending on how cheesy you like things. The only other thing I'd like to point out is try to keep a nice perimeter of dough untouched by sauce or cheese or any of that shit. You'll see why when I get to the final product before we put it in the oven. Oh, by the way, preheat your oven to about 450 degrees. Glad you told us that part. Then you want to add a layer of the meat of... Okay. I know that Dave is cheap, but this is the worst looking pepperoni I've ever seen in my entire life. Why is this why is this pepperoni almost yellow? This is the worst pepper. It's like fucking rotten. How do you have rotten cured meat? It doesn't look like pepperoni. Like this has got to be the cheapest. Was this like dollar store pepperoni or worse? Of your choice or veggies or whatever pizza toppings you want. I just decided to go straight up pepperoni. Um, I did have sausage for this, but no, it's I forgot not Pringles. to cook it. So sue me. So about, you know, three, four rows of pepperoni, depending on how pepperoni-ish you like it. 
But I want with well, but all uh, of his food looks like poop. About four rows of pepperoni. Okay, now comes the difficult part. You want to take the lengthwise side of this pizza dough here. By the way, this is a standard store-bought pizza dough. They usually come in rectangles. And uh, you want to pull this up. Keep kind of crimping the sides a little bit. And then you want to spin it around, and you want to start rolling it. Keeping, so this is the sure hard part, the he said. sides folded like that. And applying some slight pressure as you roll it over. You kind of want this thing to resemble a great big cigar or a uh, kind of like a burrito when it's done. So, again, keeping the sides in, keeping the sides in, applying that pressure. Last little bit, you want to lift it on up. This was the hard part, everybody. Are you are you good with the hard part? Roll it up, five head. Very difficult. And last final check, press down good, somewhat good and firm. Make sure everything's all sealed up. Then you want to grab a piece of parchment paper, do a big flip a and put it on the baking sheet and bake till golden brown, but at least for 25 minutes. All right, and after the allotted time, you should have something that looks like this. It's absolutely delicious, gooey, and wonderful. And that's the great big pizza roll. Show us the inside. Why don't you show us the inside? It just looks like a tube. But why? Why don't you show us the inside? And yes, the dough is not complete, by the way. It's definitely undercooked. The fact that the dough still looks like dough right here indicates that no, this is not actually golden brown. Let's see the inside. Done. Oh. Well, I guess we don't get to see the inside, everybody. Congratulations. Now you know how to roll a pizza tube. Amazing. Fucking amazing. I love it. Okay, everybody. Next, the Undertaker Last Outlaw Burger. Okay, everybody. Wait, no. I have to see this one first. I'm sorry. I have to see this one first. Salami chips and mustard dip. Guys, I'm predicting it right now. This is going to be one of the saddest one we've ever seen. Get ready. Get ready. I'm predicting it. It's going to be one of the saddest snacks of all time. Prediction made. I've never seen it. All right. Salami, chips, and mustard dip. Why is there a grub in there? There's just two fat grubs in his fucking sauce already. What is this? Why are there two tones of the mayonnaise? Here on Dave's cooking show for you today. First thing to do, we got to make the dip. So you want to take a quarter cup of sour cream, a quarter cup of mayonnaise, two tablespoons of Dijon mustard, two tablespoons of grainy mustard or whole grain mustard, whatever you call it. Then just mix this around and you want to give this at least sour cream, two types of store-bought mustard and mayo. Incredible. The taste profile is going to taste so mustardy. This reminds me of Tim's cooking show. You guys ever seen that? The Tim Heidecker cooking show where he puts mu tons of mustard in everything? Probably an hour in the fridge. Oh, and of course, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. And now it's time to make the chips. All right, have a baking sheet lined with our good friend parchment paper. And you just want to make a nice single layer of these Get ready. You know, little salamis here. And you want to pop it into a preheated 375 degree oven and bake it for 15 minutes. That's it. We'll be ready to serve in a second. And through the magic of cooking show editing, these are done. So salami chips and mustard. I told you! I fucking told you! I told you! He just... He just fucking toasted salami pieces and is dipping them into mustard! Ooh, e oh my god. Hyun, I will gladly take you up on this after we're done with Dave's shit burgers. Mustard dip. Done. 
Actually, they were surprisingly good, but obviously this is not a goddamn everyday snack. Oh my god! Surprisingly good, but obviously- Look, look at how much he put on there! That guy just slopped on a spoonful of mayo, mustard, and sour cream onto a fucking barely toasted piece of salami and called that a snack. Guys, that is not a fucking snack. This is not- this is below desperation food. This is raccoon eats. This is not a goddamn everyday snack. Keep it in mind. Little common sense. But they were actually pretty good. So, salami chips and mustard dip. Done. No, that is insulting to- that is insulting to single men. Calling that a single man dinner is absolutely insulting to single men. I'm so sorry. We have another one, though. You guys ready? This is one of the ones that gets weirdly sexual. You guys ready? Look, this one has a woman in bondage in it. On it. This one's called the Chicken Macaroni Salad. And he's got it going for a whopping 2 minutes and 59 seconds. So let's take a look. Oh, really simple. Take two chicken breasts and... Okay, missed the intro. So let's see what, what valuable information he gives us here. Alrighty, chicken macaroni salad. Uh, really simple. Take two chicken breasts and fry them up. I got them frying up in a little olive oil. A little salt, a little bit of pepper. Um, and then... Okay, everybody, let's say a prayer together. No raw chicken. No raw chicken. No raw chicken. And hopefully no burnt chicken either. But let's hope for no raw chicken. You do want to let them cool down completely because remember macaroni salad is a cold salad also make a pound of macaroni that's kind of the prep work all right let's get to the next step make a pound of that's such a cop out all righty and we're pretty much almost done already as you can see you got the one pound of macaroni we're pretty much done already. Everyone, congratulations. Almost done. Behold. Brony there. On top of that is about uh, a cup of mustard. Oh, he cooked the Those chicken. The chi he did it. He he cooked the chicken fully. Those are fully cooked chicken pieces. He did it. Chicken breast. They're supposed to be about two and a half cups, but I just kind of guesstimated. Amen. That Two chicken breasts would be more than enough. Now you want to add uh, about a half a cup of chopped onions. The great thing about this recipe is you can actually do damn near all of this. Like those are huge. Okay, personally, look, I love onions. Don't get I fucking love onions. But if you give me a salad that has fat fucking onion pieces like this, that is un inedible. Yeah. Raw onions, raw white onions in huge chunks in his salad. This is going to be fucking inedible. The night before, put everything in the fridge, you know, chop up all They're your not getting cooked. Veggies, put everything in the fridge. That chicken is dry as fuck? Yes, it is dry as fuck, but he cooked it. It's not raw. The chicken, the chicken is obviously dry, but at least he cooked it. That's what we were talking about. No worries. And then, uh, you know, five minutes before your barbecue or cookout or whatever, you can have this motherfucker ready to go. And now you want a half a cup of chopped celery. So two and a half cups of onions and only a half a cup of chopped celery. And of course, uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to show it, but of course, salt and pepper this too. Salt and pepper fucking everything. If you don't do that, you're a fucking loser. Okay? Okay. Oh, yeah, that's another thing he does. He he insults his viewers all the time. If you don't do that, you're fucking loser. He does that shit so fucking much. Salt, pepper, everything. Fine. Don't worry. Not gonna kill you. For Christ's sakes, our tongues are designed to taste salty. And finally, you want to add just four teaspoons of... Uh, yellow mustard if you don't like the yellow kind you could certainly substitute dijon or stone ground or any anything you like i just went with standard yellow mustard and then you literally just stir this around 
cover it with tin foil and serve when you need to. Again, beautiful. He's not even gonna. He's so lazy. He's not even gonna mix it. Are we not even gonna get to see him mix it? You can get the whole damn salad. Are we not even gonna get to see him mix it? Come on. The night before, I typically wouldn't do that. You can, and that's just because of the goddamn celery. Celery tends to get soggy after a bit. All right, you can see it getting oh, thank goodness. stirred around. Thank goodness. Now we get to see him mix it up. Oh, thank God. I was so worried. I'm sorry. I jumped the gun, everybody. Oh, we get to see him mix the chunks in. Let's see, everybody. Do you guys like watching mixing chunks? Because I do. Watch these chunks. Watch how mixed up it's going to be. Here, that's literally it. Chicken macaroni salad. Done. Okay, for reference, the finished product should beautiful oh man it looks so appetizing literally looks like a cow's fucking like a cow's infested fucking stomach contents like a cow that's full of fucking worms Should look something like this everything's nice and coated and mixed together so now chicken macaroni salad you Done. want me to do potato bacon soup next all right we'll do potato bacon soup next well that was it that's all we got well on to the next one, potato bacon soup. Oh, look at this one. Girls kissing. Woo! This one's got a spicy thumbnail. All right, let's see the chicken. Let's see the potato bacon soup with the kissing ladies on it. Let's do it! Potato bacon soup. Perfect for the cold nights of the winter. All right, start off. Okay, this pre this premiered in January. It was still winter. With a pound of bacon. And then, of course, you want... Ex Good point, Danny Fallen. Normally, he will make bacon... He will use bacon bits, but this is real bacon. This is real bacon. Impressive. No, Uncle Gumbald, don't you even fucking try. Don't you try to say I'm going to be classist. I've blown you guys out on this every time. String cheese and sprinkle cheese is literally more expensive than the good cheese. It's actually ripping you off. And also, bacon bits are trash. You fuckers. I'm going to chop fuckers. it up and fry it up but make sure you save the grease you're going to need that in a minute and i will show you what you need it for right now also feel free to season the bacon with a little bit of pepper too i always do of course okay all right now we got our soup pot on the stove over a medium to medium low heat okay. and you want to add some of the bacon grease back in okay at least okay. two tablespoons but i just eyeballed it Okay. Again, there's no way to make this dish healthy. Then you want to add four cloves of minced garlic and stir that around. And let the garlic just start to turn brown. And then you want to add one onion diced. And you want to sweat these for a couple of minutes till the onions are translucent. All right, through okay. the magic of All cooking right. show editing. Okay, this is acceptable so far. This is acceptable. The onions and garlic are done. Look at them. Now, we're going to add six cups of chicken broth to this. Don't worry, it'll simmer down. Okay, now we want to add 32 ounces of... Dude, bacon. come on! Oh my god. Okay, can we just watch how much of his mixture slops out here? This is another thing that Dave does all the time. He can never take his time pouring things. Instead, he fucking dumps everything in from like a three foot distance. Watch how much of this splashes out here. Just watch over here. Watch. It's fucking over here. Watch. Don't worry. It'll simmer here it comes. down. Okay, Sp now we want to add 32 ounces He's of bacon He's flinging it all over the place. I can't remember. He lost like a tenth of the mixture there. All the fucking I plopping. I did leave the skin on them. Don't worry, I washed them before I put them in here. And you just want to cut them into bite-sized pieces. And then you just want to start the long, long cooking process over a nice low heat. I don't really have a time per- Oh, yeah. Did he say bite-sized? Those potato chunks were huge. Now, mind you, big potato chunks- 
aren't necessarily bad, but they're not bite-sized. Let's be real. Say, I think I did mine for a couple of hours just on a nice low heat. Yeah, he needs a, like to run a pool skimmer through here. There's some fucking bugs and dirt in here. Simmerin. Okay, so about halfway through, I think this was about 45 minutes in or 30 minutes in. Again, I really do with chili and soups. I just go more. That bacon is fucking toast. Look at this. Okay, you can tell by this bacon is the most dried out bacon ever. Ruined it. Why would you buy thick cut bacon to turn it into fucking chips? More for a feel of when it's done versus an actual rigid time. You want to add in Oh, the yeah, yeah. By the way, wow, perfect freeze frame. How do you think this is going to... By the way, this is the perfect freeze frame. How do you, how do you fucking think this is going to end out? If you... By the way, if you... If somebody tells you uh, that they like their bacon crispy and then they buy thick cut bacon and it snaps in two, that person just doesn't know how to cook bacon. Thick cut... Act like the, the bacon that this guy had the big thick cut strips you're supposed to, it's supposed to be chewy it's supposed to be crispy on the outside and then you render the fat that's why it's thick cut bacon it's not you're not supposed to make it crispy because you're just burning it if you're buying thick cut if you want to make your little thin strips crispy go for it but thick cut bacon if you make it crispy you're burning the bacon it will melt all the fat away and it will taste like shit Anyway, bacon, and then you want to add a slurry mix of two tablespoons of cornstarch. You can see it dripping uh, off. And By the way, look at his kettle. It's fucking coated in garbage. His counter's always coated in garbage. His kettle's coated in garbage. This thing looks like somebody threw up in it. And two tablespoons of water, Disgusting. add that in. And then you just want to let everything get incorporated. By, by the way, I might have missed it. Add a half a teaspoon of thyme to this as well and now i've added the two cups of heavy cream salt and pepper to taste if you wanted a little hotter just a little bit of heat you want to uh add just a pinch of cayenne and then just simmer this till you get your desired thickness the longer you simmer the thicker the soup Alrighty, this was kind of the color and consistency i was going for uh, again, took a couple of hours. So, potato bacon soup. Done. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the Pussy Burger we've watched. This one we've watched many times. The Pussy Burger is a classic. I've done this one before. Will you really want me to do the Pussy Burger again? Do we want to watch the Pussy Burger again? It's a classic. All right, fine. We got lots of new viewers, but you all better fucking be nice to me. All right, we'll do Pussy Burger. All right, we're doing the Pussy Burger. This is an oldie but a goodie. Ah, uh, whenever I see a ticket like that, it always brings me back to the start. Because here at Pussy Burgers, we've been making these burgers the same way for 80 years. First, we start with pussy sauce. Now, legend has it, my grandpappy, well, he got this recipe by beating a blind Civil War widow. But we always make it the same. Two tablespoons of ketchup, three tablespoons of mayonnaise, and just a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. And we stir it the same way with a spoon, and then we chill it slowly in an old-fashioned fridge. You know, the kind that can kill a child. Do you see what I mean? Now, he, he doesn't do this as frequently anymore. He used to do little bits in his videos, like this one, where he opens up by talking about his grandfather beating a Civil War widow or some random shit. Um, but he doesn't do those bits anymore. I don't know why. I don't know why he doesn't do them anymore. Maybe they just weren't landing to his audience or something. Maybe it was that. 
Maybe he thought it was unprofessional. And then at the last second, we stir in some freshly ground black pepper. Then we cook our burgers the old-fashioned way. Over this is one of his two grills. He has two grills. Neither of them have ever been cleaned. Do you see how disgusting and carbonized the metal is here? I'm His other grill, if you can believe it, is unironically worse. He has a gas grill and a charcoal grill, both of which are fucking encrusted with the remains of a thousand shitty burgers. Terrible. Some charcoal on a grill out back. Now our burgers are 100% pure beef. They're bought from the finest unmarked vans in all of the city. They're also seasoned the old-fashioned way, using what some fat ass on YouTube calls an all-purpose seasoning mix. We stole it from him. And then at the last possible second, we put down a slice of American cheese from the finest dollar stores around. And then we let it melt for about 30 old-fashioned seconds. And finally, it's time to assemble our old-fashioned pussy burger. You put some sauce on the top bun. You add the iceberg lettuce. And there's your patty. Next, That's we're going to add some pickles that we picked up at a supermarket. Nice. Fancy here. And finally, last but not least, you want to add some onions. But no fucking tomatoes! There is no fucking tomatoes on this fucking burger! Tomatoes are not old-fashioned! If there is tomatoes on this burger, your waitress is gonna get an anal plug up her ass the size of Cincinnati! So come down to Pussy Burger today on Route 9, just past the Crazy Hermit's Cabin. Make sure to bring the kids and the old and the infirmed. Did you get what you wanted from that? Did you? Did you get what you wanted? Do you feel satisfied now that you know what the pussy burger is? You should probably. We're not quite done yet. We're not quite done. We have a couple more Dave's cooking to go through, okay? Listen, we have a couple more, all right? We need to see his last outlaw Undertaker burger, okay? I, re I need to see this desperately. So let's watch it. The Undertaker Last Outlaw Burger. Maybe this one's going to be a bit. Maybe it'll be the return of the bit. Let's see. Ah, uh, The Undertaker. WWE calls him the Last Outlaw. And it's kind of true, too. I mean, this guy is the last remnant of at least four or five eras in the WWE starting with the golden era and that was the era of the ultimate warrior and hulk hogan shows you how far back this dude goes but i was thinking about that the other day and well i decided to make kind of a burger inspired by the last outlaw the undertaker the undertaker one of the most legendary wrestlers of all time let's see how the burger turns out. Do we think that the burger will be a tribute to the legacy? Let's find out. Okay, the first thing we gotta do for this here uh, burger is make the Jack Daniels barbecue sauce. Now, if you know anything about Mark Calloway. <laughs> <laughs> I love that option four. Undertaker is right. This thing will probably put me six feet under. Impo grave. True! Guy that plays the Undertaker. Huge Jack Daniels fan. So, what I got here heating over about medium heat is a tablespoon of olive oil and about a quarter cup of onions. You want to saute oh, this till the onions know, are Danny. translucent. Okay, they're not entirely translucent yet, but they're getting, you can kind of get to see, they're getting ready to go. Now you want to add two cloves of garlic minced and turn the heat down. Why? Again, burnt garlic tastes like shit. True. So you want to give this already got uh, about some, pieces. some of these are starting to burn another buddy. minute or so. Just let the garlic get a little toasty. Just a little toasty. Okay, now things are going to start happening in rapid succession. You want to get a cup and a half of ketchup, a half a table. That is a lot. Of is he making a meatloaf burger? That is so much ketchup. What the fuck? That's a fuckload of ketchup. It's going to be a meatloaf burger. Oh. A spoon of Worcestershire sauce. A teaspoon of AC vinegar, 
uh, one and a half tablespoons of brown sugar. Salt and pepper to taste. taste more to sugar? Up. You're putting more sugar in with the ketchup? American ketchup has so much sugar in it already. Oh. A quarter teaspoon to a half a teaspoon of chili powder, depending on how hot you like it. And, of course, a quarter cup of bourbon. That's about what I put in. I put a, I just eyeballed a shot. Um, and uh, if you want a little bit stronger bourbon flavor, then uh, feel free to do that. Give this a bit, uh, bit of a stir around. You won't need to have it on the heat very long. Just uh, kind of... Pour it in a container and let it chill out in the fridge for a bit. Sorry, did something catch on fire that there? I need to see that again. A bit, uh, bit of a stir around. <laughs> wait, wait. He left in footage of shit catching on fire. <laughs> Look down in the corner. Feel free to do that. Give this a bit, uh, bit of a stir around. You <laughs> won't need to have it on the heat very long. Just uh, kind of <laughs> pour it in a container and let it chill out in the fridge for a bit. Next step. He All right, so onto the for burner. the only WWE wrestler that transcends the word legend, you need a big fucking burger. Okay. This is a half-pound patty of 80-20, or as it's also known, ground chuck, and I'm using my seasoning blend of all purpose, and you want to cook this. Okay, I know I don't need to say this to all of you, but if you put that much fucking all-purpose seasoning on the top of your burger, you're going to have the sandiest fucking burger ever. This burger is going to be gritty as shit. Till it's 160 in the center. Um, if you did grind the meat yourself, you could certainly go to somewhere, somewhere north of medium if you want. Um, but... Yeah, uh, this will take a north of medium on a burger. Oh, that makes sense. This guy's pushing for a well done burger. That's also true, Danny. Don't season the burger on the grill. Season it before. Otherwise, you'll burn the fuck out of the seasonings. Yes. Is he using a cookie sheet? No, it looks like he's using like a George Foreman or a, or a hot plate. That isn't true because a lot comes off in the cooking process. He does need to massage it in and distribute it more. I mean, yes and no. If he's cooking it on the grill, he's going to lose it. In here, he's just going to pick it back up again. A while, too. It's a big-ass burger, so. Yeah, it's like a griddle. It's I a griddle. forgot how long it took me to cook mine. Uh, I think at least four or five minutes aside, so. You have the footage. You have the footage. You're showing the footage that shows how long it took to make the burger, dude. Maybe even six minutes. You'll just oh, I know keep them a meat thermometer turn. happy. I know handy. It'll help. Yeah. Okay, through the magic of cooking show editing, the burger patty is done. Also, don't forget to toast up. Dry as fuck. Shit bun. A couple of buns. And now we're going to add the cheese. And this is a combo of pepper jack. Swiss and Monterey. Pepper Jack is Monterey. So it's two slices of Monterey with Swiss on top. You're not going to be able to taste that Swiss cheese. Well, I guess it depends on the Swiss cheese. You might actually only taste the Swiss cheese. Guys, Monterey Jack is like a super, super mild cheese that barely has any flavor. Pepper Jack is just Monterey Jack with pepper in it because Monterey Jack has no fucking flavor. This should have been, if you wanted a good burger, it should have been all Swiss. Swiss is a fucking fantastic cheese because it's a strong cheese, a.k.a. it complements the umami flavor of a cheeseburger. American cheese is enjoyed on cheeseburgers because it, because it melts easily, because it's a mild flavor, and it has a sort of uh, milky flavor that complements it, that complements the the like savoriness of cheeseburgers really well but it's also cheap if you're gonna not use like american cheese oh hello um if you're not gonna use like american cheese then you should use a good cheese like swiss and not fucking water it down with two slices of monterey so uh get the uh get a lid on of some sort to create some steam throw a little water in there and we should be ready in 
literally 30 seconds. All right, let's move to the final step. Okay, now let's start assembling the burger. First, we're going to create a nice little bed of iceberg lettuce. It's the only lettuce. A, a repeated sin that uh, that our, our friend Dave here engages in is that he always uses iceberg lettuce. Iceberg lettuce is trash, okay? I know every single time I bring this up, my chat gets mad at me. Iceberg has no nutrients. It tastes like water. All that iceberg gives you is a crunch. But if you just want that crunch, you should just put ice chips on your burger because ice chips at least won't ha add a disgusting, weird, dirty flavor that iceberg lettuce comes with. Romaine, uh, fucking spinach, fucking uh, basically any other leafy green is so much better than iceberg in every... Uh, iceberg has no nutrition. It's super wet, so all it does is make the burger wet. Iceberg equals crunchy water, and you are correct to say so. Thank you. Thank you. That is worthy of a burger. Then we're going to put on that big old fucking patty. I'm uh, spreading the Jack Daniels barbecue sauce. on. Okay. This isn't Jack Daniels barbecue sauce. It's just ketchup with Jack Daniels mixed in it. That's... The top Fuck. bun... But, oh, we got a shit ton of fixings for this burger. A shit ton of fixings. Got some pickles, because burgers without pickle. Did those come from the counter when you dropped the pickle? Is that, is that rat turds? Those are fucking garbage. If you get a burger without a pickle on it, either throw it at the waitress or kick the kitchen door open and throw it at the chef. Uh, here we got some French's fried onions, some fried salamis. Okay, so he must have bought a lot of salami. By the way, there is literally no person, there is no person on the planet who can eat this without getting a fucking heartburn from hell. Fried salami, bacon, F fucking barbecue sauce with Jack Daniels and onions in it. More onions. This is going to be... This is going to be the stomach ache from fucking hell. Yeah, you would. Exactly. Vermin says, I would immediately shit myself. Yes! Like, no offense, but there is no human that can eat fried salami alongside bacon, ground beef, Swiss cheese, and Jack Daniels without getting violently ill. No one. That not even dwarves can do that. Okay? Fuck. And of course, good old fashioned makes everything in the universe bad. Look at the sad state of this bacon. What did you look at how they massacred my boy? Whoa, a pig died for this. You sick fucks. A pig died to be burnt like this? What's wrong? What is wrong with you? Better bacon. And I'm just going to scoot off here to get myself some freshly sliced tomatoes. And that's it. That's a burger worthy of the last outlaw in the WWE, The Undertaker. What a shit-ass bun, too. Why would you do all of this work to put it on a fucking, the, low, the literal, like, 99-cent per 12 bun and those tomatoes do look sad yes they are underripe but i mean to be fair this entire that's it it just he didn't the, even the undertaker oh i hate the way he ends his videos w the undertaker definitely deserves better Okay, everybody, we have we have another video to do from here, okay? Hold on. We have another video to do from Dave's cooking show, okay? We're doing one more. We're doing one more Dave's cooking show, and then we're going to do something else, okay? But first, we have to do one more of these, which I need to see his ribs. I need to see Hobo Joe's ribs. Do you understand? I need to see how this man ruins ribs.
Okay, let's make some Hobo Joe's ribs. Why do I call him Hobo Joe's? Well, he was the name of the homeless man that I beat without mercy to get this recipe. Alright, um, you want to start off to make the rub with four tablespoons of brown sugar, two big tablespoons of chili powder, two big tablespoons of paprika, and I'm just eyeballing this. I'm not really measuring anything out too carefully. Three teaspoons of cumin, two teaspoons of garlic powder, a teaspoon of salt, and a teaspoon of pepper. Now, this should give you more than enough rub for two racks of baby back ribs. And then you just want to give this a stir and make sure everything is uh, mixed together all nice and wonderful. All right, let's move on to the ribs. Wait, did he say Toronto steak seasoning? Did he put Toronto steak seasoning in there? Did I miss him do that? Okay, so we got our two racks of rib heat here, and what you see I'm doing is removing the silver skin. There is debate whether this step is necessary or not. I like to do it, but that's just me. Uh, the way I remove silver skin is I make a slit along one of the ribs, and then I remove it by grabbing it with a paper towel, and it pulls it right up. Again, use whatever works good for you but that's what i found works it's fucking necessary as fuck okay i don't cook ribs ever but i was under the impression that yes you need to remove silver skin because it tastes like shit because if i'm not mistaken silver skin is is like a is like a like a colloquial term for um fuck what's it called uh like connective tissue what the fuck is it called it's connective tissue but it has a name it's called um fuck i can't think of it no not cartilage not ligaments tendons no it's got its own name uh fa fa is it fasc fascia yeah fascia tissue is that what it's called fascia tissue thin ca casing of connective tissue that surrounds and holds every organ yes is silver skin fascia? Silver skin is a thin membrane of elastin wrapping connective tissue such as the fascia. It is! It is fascia! I was right! Yes! Medical knowledge check correct! I knew it! Yep. Yuck. You don't want to eat that shit. That shit is designed to literally hold stuff in place. It's not like, it's not soft tissue. It's literally like the bare bones of connective tissue. Best for me is you make a slit, you start it, and then you grab a paper towel and it just comes right off. Again, there is debate whether or not the step is even necessary. And now we want to rub our ribs. So grab that rib uh, mix we made a little bit ago and just slather the shit out of it. And uh, on the outside, um, I already removed the silver skin from this one. Uh, outside, I got... Okay. I don't mean to be a nitpicker, but like... Isn't the point of a rub to rub it in? Not just to sprinkle it on? Isn't the entire point that you're supposed to rub it into the meat so that it gets into the nooks and crannies? Or else it just will it just won't taste good at all? The whole point is you need to get it into the meat so that the whole meat tastes good. That's why they call it a rub. Smoker going at 275, and I'm using a combination of mesquite and pecan wood. Um, again, you can use whatever wood you like. Uh, apple's another good one that I commonly... Pecan, wait, why would you mix your woods? Mesquite is great, but just pecan wood? Pecan wood has a sweet, nutty, rich flavor, more similar to hickory. But mesquite is like tangy and sharp. Why would you mix woods like that? That seems weird to me. Why wouldn't you just use one? He barely touched it. Pecan is decent wood. Mesquite is expensive and a little confers a lot of that flavor. Okay. All right. All right. Maybe this was a wise, frugal decision on Dave's part. I'm willing to be wrong. 
I'm willing to be wrong. Maybe mixing mesquite and pecan wood is a good mix. Use cherry wood's another good one I commonly hey, let's listen. use. Like uh, apples, another good one that I commonly use. Cherry wood's another good one I commonly use. And then you'll want to smoke these for, you know, I hate to give smoke times till they're done. That's the highly scientific way I do smoking till they're done, till they read 165. The reason is your smoke times, if you live in Colorado, might be different from somebody who lives in Louisiana or Texas. So till they're done. But these bad bastards are ready for the smoker right now. Got the rub on. And we're going to use all this shit. Don't worry about bad too much. It'll fall off in the smoke. This is not a rub. This is what we would what I would like to call a burial. Okay? Do you see how he's not actually doing any rubbing, but instead is just sort of dumping dirt on top of the ribs? When he puts this into the smoker, all of it is going to fall off. And the meat in the middle of the rib, the tender, yummy, good shit that you want when you get ribs, you know, when you bite the rib off the rib and you're like mmm it's so soft and tender well that meat in the middle is gonna taste like nothing because the rub wasn't rubbed in Looking process because we're gonna flip these all right let's put them out on the smoker until they're done okay so if we're making ribs we gotta have a goddamn barbecue sauce and I'm not going to buy one. Again. I'm just going to make one. All right. So this is my sweet. <coughs> sweet and sexy barbecue sauce. That is a fucking quart of ketchup. That is like a fucking quart of ketchup. This is like a huge pasta pot, and the entire bottom third is full of motherfucking ketchup. Um, two cups of ketchup, two thirds of a cup of apple cider vinegar. Uh, I'm adding here three tablespoons of dark molasses. Then there'll be a half a cup of brown sugar coming in the mix. This is why you don't want to add your sauce too early because that sugar. That is so much sugar. You got me a cheeseburger? No, I didn't bring you a cheeseburger. I made you a kidney donut. Oh, hell yeah. I would love a cheeseburger. Uh, you want to just set it over here for now and I'll eat it once I'm done reviewing this disgusting food? Thank you so much. Oh, this looks fucking amazing. Now you want to see some food that looks fucking good, everybody. Oh, hush. I can do what I want now. No, it looks disgusting. It doesn't look disgusting. Now that is a cheeseburger that looks delicious. No Big, delicious pickles, home cut potatoes, a homemade sauce. Wonderful. I can't wait to eat this. These are veggie burgers too. Veggie burgers. Look at that. I'm gonna take a bite. It'll burn. Two tablespoons of onion powder, two tablespoons to three tablespoons of chili powder. About two teaspoons of pepper and roughly about four tablespoons of tomato paste. And you just... A full fucking cup of brown sugar after putting three tablespoons plus more of molasses in. You will not taste any of the spice in here. It is going to be all sweetness. Just want to, you know... Give this a chance over medium, <coughs> medium low heat to, to, uh. Why would he leave? Wait, he makes prepared videos. Why would he leave that cough in? I can forgive that for streamers. Obviously, we don't turn the camera off. But why would he leave that in? Uh, I don't know, get incorporated together and, uh. Again, you don't have to be too precise with these measurements. Again, I just kind of. Got it kind of simmering pretty good, reduced it to low, and I think left it on the stove for like half an hour, stirring occasionally. So, all right. Something like that in color, but it'll get a lot uh, smoother after 25 minutes. Nope. No. 
the doo-doo flex like dripping down here the fucking sloppy ass disgusting thing on the counter over here that he just threw over there the nasty shit swipes the chunkiness of this barbecue sauce everything here looks putrid just repulsive of uh sitting on the stove so you know again get it up to get it up to a good simmer a boil almost and then reduce nope. it to low and then stir it every so often to make sure nothing sticks to the bottom all right through the magic Wow. My stomach literally screamed out in agony looking at that. Holy shit. He made charcoal. He did it. He reverse engineered meat into stone. It is possible. Alchemy is possible. We learned. of cooking show editing these ribs are done they've been sauced they've been rubbed and they're ready but don't worry we're gonna have a bit more sauce i'm taking big pieces of rib off here i ain't going for no small shit and before some smart ass says something the pink that you're seeing that's a smoke ring it isn't raw if you know anything about smoking you know that so uh yeah just cut in between the rib bones and you should be good all right, let's move up to serving. I'm so And yes, sad. I know the electric knife I'm using is about a million. Yeah, I was going to say, this doesn't look done. This does not look done. But the outside is burnt. I'm fucking years old. But, you know, I got it from my grandma and it still works good. So, fuck it. All right, to serve, slap some of that son of a bitchin' sauce on top, as much as you like. Guys, this might be the worst one we've ever seen. I'm not kidding you. This might unironically be the worst Dave's cooking ever. Look at this shot. Look at the, the, the horrific, nightmarish beauty of this shot. His brown thumb, the weird stains on his, on his fucking knuckles... The disgusting putrid stains over here, his gut squishing onto the counter, the poop over here, the burnt brick getting slopped with the diarrhea shit over here, a piece of, of what appears to be like, I don't know, stomach lining or maybe like rectal lining just sitting right here. This right here is a work of fucking filth art. What you are witnessing is like, it's like the dung eater from Elden Ring. Like, you know, no spoilers, but the Dung Eater is a very powerful entity. But not because he's like a great warrior. Just because he's so fucking disgusting that, he, that he's gained the power of fucking putridity. And that's what we have right here. John Waters will fucking turn over in his fucking... Wait, he's not dead. So, he'll turn over in his bed. Yes, this pleases Nurgle. I I know I have food over here. I'm I'm not eating because of how bad this looks right now. This is a legendary moment. We have witnessed the most putrid dish that Dave has ever made. We've been watching for those of you who are newcomers or freshly born imps, for those of you who are new to the to the demon mama phenomenon. Uh We've watched Dave's cooking a long time. We've seen some very bad dishes. But this, I think this might take the cake. Have a great night, Windleby. Thanks for being here. Have a great night. Let's continue. We got like 30 seconds left. 
And because, uh, again, ribs is not a clean food. If you wear white while eating ribs, you're a fucking idiot. Just look at this. What is this? Anybody, can you tell me what this is? Can you tell me what these strange specks are? Do you know what this brown smear is? Was this his cat? It looks like it has hair in it. What is this hairball, this brown smeared hairball over here? Can you tell me? What is this? This looks like bug shit. Could be pepper. Could be bug shit. Who knows? This is dripping off of the plate onto the counter. And this is what he shows for the world. Why? Just why? It is. It's like Mr. Plinkett. Yeah. And then just uh, add some good old-fashioned waffle fries and enjoy. Hobo Joe's no! ribs. Done. Okay. You're welcome. You're fucking welcome. This is what I do for you all. You see? Not only do I make banger original content... I also do banger react content where I absorb the main blow of this shit and you get to be protected. I'm basically, I'm basically a hero and you should donate and like my stream. See?